Imagine if we didn't put the AC on how hard it would have been. Mm-hmm. We didn't bring a, a fan to just, like, just, just shut it off. Does it off during the show? No, no, we put it on for an hour. Oh, I got you. And they charge us per minute. Yep. After 6 o'clock, it's like something like $3 a minute. Yeah. No, not that much, but it's <laughs> a per minute rate that they charge us. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. Then we should get a discount because we pay the same thing the day people pay. <laughs> I want to tell her. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, this evening we're going to tell you about a great celebration coming up. And joining me to tell you about the celebration is Sipatsing, David Romero. Hello. And David's actually the uh, still photographer for Native Voice TV. Mm -hmm. He also has his own radio show, which is... Native Way. Native Way, <laughs> and that is on 91.5 KKUP? Mm -hmm. It's on the fourth Sunday of, of every month from uh, 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, I'm also uh, on Indian Time with Jack Hyatt. I read the PSAs for him every Tuesday night. Been doing that for a while now. Oh, huh? yes, from 8 to 10 p.m. He's the one who, who got me started uh, uh, being a programmer. He told me, well, you know, you're here all the time. I think you should start carrying your weight. I want you to go ahead and study this book and and take the exam so that when I'm not here, you can you can be my replacement. So you'll be an alternate programmer. I told him, well, okay, that sounds fine. And uh, and I studied for a while. And uh, when I was ready, I took the test and wow. and they said I passed it. And so uh, I became his assistant. And um, not too long after that, they offered Teresa another day for her program, uh, Global Winds Native Roots, uh, for the fourth Sunday since she has the second Sunday of the month at the same time slot so mm -hmm. that she could have two programs in the Native uh, arena there. So she had subsequently uh, got in a, a higher position in one of the groups that she was in and it didn't have that time to fill that slot. So she recommended that they uh, me for that, and I didn't. Uh, good choice. Good choice. Yeah, I didn't have any <laughs> idea that it was gonna. Uh, oh, I don't have enough time in this. In this, uh, they won't even consider me. They had four other people that applied for that slot, and no, they. Jack went to bat for me, and mm -hmm. Teresa put in a good word, and the next thing you know, they come and shaking my hand and told me I, I got the the slot. Well, that's great. And I've been enjoying myself, on that program, and you know it's really a blessing and. You know, I've got uh, Jack and Teresa to, to thank for that. And uh, I still say to this time, I've uh, 30 years ago when I was in college, I studied these things, but I never expected to be doing it as part of my life. It was mm -hmm. just something to go through school and get a grade and the GI Bill, get some funding, you know, and, and that. But uh, now that I'm doing it, uh, full well, you've circle. been doing it for four years for Native Voice TV. Yeah, doing the next slide job. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So I, I uh, you know, I, I thank the Creator uh, all the time uh, for putting me in this position and allowing me to do these things. Even though in my own mind I don't believe it, you know, that it's really happening. You know. But I see no, myself. It certainly is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so you're involved in a lot of things in the community, and one mm -hmm. of the things we're both involved in as a sponsor, Native Voice TV is mm -hmm. a sponsor of the American right. Indian Heritage Celebration. Mm -hmm. And this year's a third annual. Yes, it is. And it'll be at the Hispanic University. Yeah, the National Hispanic University, mm -hmm. and that is on Story, Story. Yeah. near yeah. White Road. Yeah. And it's really grown from oh, the first yes. year. There's a lot of lot of planning mm -hmm. that goes into it. Um, 
a lot of people spend time, oh, you know, yeah. and, putting uh, all the details together because it takes a lot of work. But it's really grown every year, and mm -hmm. for the third annual, it's uh, it's going to be a really nice one this year. The dancers alone, there's there's I believe about 200 dancers that show up, Aztec dancers and in full regalia, and they dance uh, the whole time. It seems like. Well, this is going to be on October 18th mm -hmm. from 10 to 6 o'clock. Yes, it is. And um, there'll be a lot of activities. Actually, there'll be uh, a language presentation by some of the um, California tribes. Mm, the Wekma tribe has uh, a, a booth there. That they'll be showing uh, a lot of the the things that they've done in, in you know, in the area that they're from the San Francisco Bay Area. So they'll show uh, how their lifestyle uh, was before the Europeans came and uh, telling about their families and how things have progressed since then and what they're doing now to to revitalize their 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 communities and their language to bring it back. They sure are. They have a, a wonderful presentation yes, uh, exhibit that they put on, so it'd be wonderful for people to come by. And it's you know it's great for um, the children. Yeah, Good while, education. while back when the uh, Peace and Dignity Journey people came through here, they had set up that display at the Tanf building, and it stayed there uh, for quite a while. And I'm, it might still be there, you know, for people. It's pretty to elaborate. It, it I, you is, know, they put is. a lot of work into it, so and it's good. worth it for you to come out and take mm -hmm. a look and see, you know, what they have. They'll, yeah. There's people there that will explain the, the everything they have there yep. in the uh, exhibit area. Yeah, they honor they honor their veterans. Mm -hmm. You know, the the ones who who have served this country and and uh, given their lives. And uh, it's a it's a great honor for them. You know, and, and to be remembered in that way. You know that you mentioned that they actually the celebration itself has a an elders honoring yes. and a veterans honoring. Mm -hmm. And this year, um, the the theme is youth. Right. So there's, they're going to be honoring youth that are nominated uh, for recognition mm -hmm. this year. So it'll be really nice. Yeah. It'll be and nice to have that addition to yeah. it. And then they have all the, they'll have vendors. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be able to find jewelry and That's and my all favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> and clothing, jackets, you know, and mm -hmm. sweaters and things uh, uh, that are native made. And artwork, lots right, of art. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people see my jewelry, oh, where'd you get that? You know, well, I didn't get it at Macy's, you no. know, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you have to come out <laughs> to these events if you're looking for those kind of native items, native yes. handmade um, jewelry, genuine, crafts. Genuine mm -hmm. handmade. They are. Mm -hmm. They are. So there'll be a lot of those. You know, we have some slides. Maybe we can take a look at those yeah. and show people what the other events were the past couple years and what they can expect this year. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, there's the flyer. It's the third annual Indians. It's kind of little tiny print there, but I think we have the information a bit larger. So we can go on to the next slide there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. Uh, it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right. Again at the National Hispanic University. And that's from that's the uh, Swift Cloud Drum. Yes, they they were uh, open the ceremony for us when we were inside uh, mm -hmm. for the dinner and the honoring of the elders and of uh, the veterans. And they also had uh, uh, a show of uh, regalia. Oh, regalia. They're going to do that again this yes, year. Yeah, they had a, had a modeling their regalia right. from the, the different tribes. The next slide tribes. might have that. I know one of these slides does. Yes. Yeah. Our next slide. There it is. Yeah, That's from the uh, when they had the uh, little um, modeling mm -hmm. of the regalia, which they will be doing again this year. These are the girls that participated, some of the, the young, the youth. Yeah. Well, that's, and that's this year. They're going to be a little bit older than that. Yes, <laughs> they a couple are. years back. And, and usually, as they get older, their they regalia are. changes a little uh -huh. bit. But it's it is it's it's a real good education to see the difference in regalia from the different dancers Absolutely. from the, the different, different tribes. tribes. Mm -hmm. Because there there are jingle dancers there, and there's traditional dancers, and there's shawl dancers, and their regalia is all different, and their dance is different. Okay, the next one. Okay, now this is, I grabbed Leon's old picture and stuck it here. <laughs> I was mentioning that they honor the veterans and people nominate them. And this is Leon Chief Elk, and he's been very active in the community over the years. And there he yes, is yeah. as uh, 
when he was in? He's in the Army, I think it is. I'm not sure. I think he was a Marine. A Marine? I know he's yeah. I keep probably kill us for saying the wrong. Yeah, well, he was a veteran. <laughs> but he's a he veteran, and, and we did honor him, and mm -hmm. that was Leon. And the next one? Now, this is Leon now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Before and, and after. Actually, this is an honoring of Lauren Chief Elk at the same uh, event last year, and she was being honored for her bravery and in, in uh, uh, well, that, that, that college protecting yeah. uh, other youth during mm -hmm. that De Anza rape case that uh, was in the headlines, and she did a lot to take care of her sisters. Next. Next slide. There we go. Oh, this was the um, the quilt that was put together by Louise um, for they were doing the blood thing, blood drive for. Yeah. I'm thinking for marrow, bone marrow. Bone marrow. That's what it was. Bone marrow, and this was on display at that event. So there's a lot of different. Uh, types of activities there. You're exposed to a lot of things that impact Native people. And so this was, they had the quilt there on display of information on bone marrow. Uh, because a lot of times in our communities, you don't have a lot of people that get tested to donate. So yes, they were and, encouraging that. And, yeah. and a lot of it has to do with the marrow, has to do with who you are. You right. Know, if you're Native American, usually it has to come from another Native American. Exactly, and that's why we're encouraging more people yes, to participate. Yeah. And that's, it's, it's a very good cause. And the next one? And let's see if the next one. Okay, there's some of the jewelry there. Oh, yeah, my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I think I bought that one at Second Up. That's right here. Well, on there it is. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's on David's arm now. <laughs> on my arm yeah, there's now. a lot of beautiful jewelry <laughs> there. A lot of silver, turquoise, beaded. Mm -hmm. A lot of, you find a lot of beautiful things at these events. Is that, that's Mike, isn't it, Mike? Mike? I believe that is. Uh, I've talked to him and uh, about coming on and telling us what it is to be a vendor. Oh, and, and maybe, this maybe soon we'll this is Leo uh, Chavez, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he has beautiful things. I have a lot of his jewelry oh, yeah. as well. As Always run to his booth. Yeah, He's going to be fact, there too. Yeah, yeah, he fixed mine. I I dropped mine. Oh, that's and right. He did fix your jewelry, the, huh? One of the stones, and he was able to to find mm -hmm. the stone, and uh, and put it in and tighten up the ones that were loose too. Great so, silversmith. Oh, he is excellent. Next one. And we had him on the show one time, too, I believe. Right? No, he hasn't come on yet. He's oh, okay. He, we'll have to get Yeah, the next slide. Oh, here it comes. Ah, oh, there's Laverne. Got her. Uh, <laughs> and Lou, right? Yes, and yeah. the American and Indian Alliance has a lot to do with it also. They're, they're one of the sponsors. Laverne mm -hmm. is the uh, chair. Yes, he is. Of the American Indian Alliance. Laverne's there on the right. Okay, yeah. the next slide. Yeah, so the the alliance has their meetings on the first the first Wednesday, Wednesday of every, every month, month, and this is Liz, and they're putting up the uh, for the bone marrow for the bone marrow drive drive right? right yeah yeah so yeah it takes a lot of work these people not only are putting up things and setting up the event that day they actually I think there was one more slide wasn't there <laughs> um, they um, they're meeting weekly. To yes. plan at the event. Yeah, it's so close to, to, to being on now. But I mean, you know, there's the health, uh, health fair, there's art booths, music, vendors, crafts, and uh, cultural activities. There's so much. And they're even going to have the, the uh, San Francisco Dragon. That's going to be new this year. Yes. That's, that's, that's going to be kind of yeah. exciting. That's the lacrosse team. Uh huh. Uh, Major League lacrosse team. Right. That's, that's, so that's that. kind of exciting. Yeah. You know, they're also having a health fair there. Yes. Because diabetes is a very important issue with it Native is. people, so they'll be doing some, I think they'll be doing, doing the testing, because I know they, they did that they last year. They do, do the and, blood and, pressure thing. And, and, and uh, at, in the past, I know that they have uh, helped people in getting the testing equipment that mm -hmm. they need, you know, so there's a possibility that if you, if you have diabetes and, uh, or they find that you have the diabetes that they could give you, uh, the information or get you the equipment that you need to monitor it, mm -hmm. you know. So that's another good thing because I know that I I got tested 
through the Indian Health Center for Diabetes because it is in my family. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, I don't have it yet. <laughs> to, or I, I probably won't get it, which will be really good. But, uh, you know, the program there is very good. They have a diabetes prevention program through the Indian Health Center. And it's, if, you're, uh, if you qualify, then it's, it's free for you. And you have to have the traits for diabetes in order to qualify. And then, and then they train you to uh, prevent. They teach you diet, exercise. And they actually have classes. In, they have uh, classes. Exercise for, classes. They, they have all of that, and they, they teach you a lifestyle, a, a change in lifestyle to keep you from getting it. I know I had a friend who had diabetes, went to the hospital, never had to take his insulin or anything because they kept him on the proper diet and and uh, and on all of that but once he got out and got back to his old habits again he had to start using his insulin again and all that so it, it can be controlled and a lot of the control is self-control mm -hmm. and that's just something that a lot of people don't don't exercise is self-control that's right but uh, you know and then I just wanted to mention the tribal sponsors it's the Mawekma Ohlone tribe of mm -hmm. the San Francisco Bay Area yep. We have the Ama Matsun Tribal Band of Mission San Juan Bautista and Mission Santa Cruz Indians. Right. And then the Ohlone Costanoan Esalen Nation of the Greater Monterey Bay Area, and that's Louise, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and there's a lot of community organizations. As we said, Native Voice TV is one right. of the sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, Center for Training and Careers is a sponsor. Yes, the Native are. TANF program. Exactly. The Indian Health Center. Mm -hmm. uh, American Indian Alliance, right? And uh, they all they all participate. There's quite a few, and the um, Indian Health Center is actually ask, acting as a fiscal agent. So right. if somebody wants to make a donation, we're always looking for funds there to go. Uh, grow the event. Mm -hmm. um, please uh, give us a call, and we're always looking for all kinds of things other than just money. We you know could use a lot of things, so. Give us a call if you'd like to help out. But please, come out to the event. That's the date, October 18th. 18th. It's yeah. a Saturday. Spend your day out there with us. Get to know the Native community here. Everyone is welcome. Bring the kids. It's a good educational yeah. experience. From 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right. Well, we'll see you out there, hopefully. Oh, yes. You know what, David? I was thinking about all these different shows. You know, it's been four years now. Yeah. We've had a lot of interesting shows, people that have come on the show from... Far away. There's a lot of people from oh. back east to, mm -hmm. you know, the South Dakota. Area. A lot of talent. Yes. Um, and I was Texas. remembering Eddie Madrill. Remember yes. Eddie? Yes. Uh huh. You know, when we when we show programs from the past, I I tell everybody that we're having one of the best of this week, uh -huh. and uh, you have to tune in to see what it is. So this is one of our best. This is. Well, we have a little clip of Eddie Madrill when he came on the show. It's been a Oh, Maybe a couple years, but, yeah. <laughs> but if we could see that little clip of Eddie, we'll share that with those who may not have caught that particular show. And this is only one of his talents. That's right. I mean, he, so he's he a dancer. Only, and he's a hoop dancer. He's a deer dancer. Uh, he's an actor. And he's a teacher. And he's a teacher, yeah. Grade school teacher. Mm -hmm. So, so can we really, see yeah. Eddie? Yeah. Yeah, again, I, as I said, you know, Tony Fuentes is just a Lakota person. Uh, Man and here he is brought this hoop hoops to my life. Ready? And as I explained to the children, you know, the circle is a circle There's of life. We've all been taught, even a lot of people who aren't in business, they learn from movies. And it really means that there's no beginning, there's no end. The sun rises, sets, and then rises again for us to do something great each day. Um, you know, I, I ask the kids as well, you know, what kind of different things can they imagine with a hoop? And I tell them, when I feel as though it's okay, I let them know that this really, to me, is like, is like my church. For them, it's a tube, it's a pl piece of plastic with tape around it, that's okay. No problem. You know, it can be that. That's exactly what it is. It can be round and sideways, it can be straight. But to me, this is really like my church in the essence that it teaches me how to become a better human being. It tells me stories. And the hoop dance is a dance that a lot of different tribes um, will have their origin stories about. Mm -hmm. And it's been given to me in a lot of different ways. But uh, one of the things I like is the story about the children down in the southwest who were given the hoops to build dexterity because some of those children had to go up into their homes um, that were cliff dwellings and mm -hmm. if they were being attacked by enemy or by animal they couldn't get surrounded but they'd have to climb in their homes and there weren't always ladders there 
So they would have to use dexterity, hand-eye coordination to, to uh, climb up to safety. So the hoop was given to them. There's a lot of different stories. Again, as I say, some tribes um, will have dancers in their tribes today that will dance with up to 30 hoops, 40 hoops, and tell very beautiful stories with a lot of different wow. things. I was taught that um, you know, the, the, the most you can create with the least amount as possible is, is a really good tradition, as well as some tribes use the dance primarily for uh, healing purposes, you know, healing ceremonies. There's some dancers that will dance with the hoops, um, holding them all in their hands. I was told that since we're not the ones who created any of the living beings or any of the things here on earth, that we need to pick up the hoops, uh, hoops off the ground with our feet, then our hands. Wow. And then just like for some who have Western education, we understand that there's mitosis. and entering into the wor earth by two human beings. Pins. Krebs cycle, if you're going to go into science again. And that's why there's a great deal of pride in being native and having all of those things that Western science has taught us and being uh, very knowledgeable about all, about all those things without those graphs and diagrams, but rather having it in our songs, our stories, and our dances. So again, for the children, you know, I asked them that they not say anything, and that one of the most important things I ever learned in my life is that we have two eyes, two ears, and only one mouth. So it's more important throughout our life to watch and listen than it is to talk during this dance, but to watch and listen and see all the different things that they can imagine in the dance. And that when they go back to class, <laughs> they can either write about it or talk about it, draw a picture about it. Of course, with music, I uh, do a lot more spinning. of course we end with what's important to all of us. Oh. Wow. So that's a hoop dance. Practice that on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, yeah we'll be bringing um, little clips from past shows so people can kind of catch up on yeah. some of the things they miss and some of the little highlights that, oh, uh, yeah. and they were just um, fantastic. There's been quite a few programs, a few hundred. I know, <laughs> quite a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's see. We have a powwow coming up in uh, West Valley. Did you get the date on that? Um, no. no. Uh, well, we'll bring I, that to you I, next time. Yeah. But we want to make sure you come out on October 18th. Mm -hmm. 10, uh, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. National Hispanic University. It's located on Story Road, and it's right near White Road. So it's about half block down there. There it is. There's the information. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> it's right there. There's the address. Um, there's a website there. You can go to that website, and it'll kind of give you a little background of what's going to be there, which tribes are uh, involved with uh, putting it on, which organizations are sponsoring. A lot of pictures from the other events. So I hope you come out there because we're definitely going to be there. Oh, yes. They're going to have raffles, too, I believe, a raffle. Yeah, we have, they always have all kinds of mm -hmm. things there. That's okay, so easy. David, tell me your highlights of the summer. Where have you been? Oh, my goodness. I, we I've, have three minutes. So I've, I've tried make to make it. Quick, it no. most, <laughs> of the, most of the powwows I've been going to have been at the universities and, and colleges. Uh, uh, University of San Francisco, Mills College. Uh, you know, they, they, they're, they're small powwows. They're not the real big ones. Uh, but the big one I went to was Mother's Day powwow at Stanford. Oh, of course. You know, Can't miss that one, huh? <laughs> no, I, I, I make that one you every know, year. I always ask people to remember Leonard Peltier because yes. they always have a booth out at the powwows. Most powwows do. There's a support group. And, uh, you know, people would just come by and donate a few dollars or if they want to buy a T-shirt or if his books are there. Mm -hmm. But remember that Leonard Peltier has been in prison 
for how are you how yeah, lost 31, count? 31, 31 years. is it 32 by now? 32 almost, yeah. Yeah, it's almost 32. And you know that September 12th is his birthday. September 12th, and that's he's coming up, coming so. And you know, uh, if, if you go to uh, leonardpeltier.org, I believe it is, uh, you can find the address to send him a card. Send him a birthday card or, or uh, you know, just send him a letter, you know, and, uh, support and tell him that, you know, we're, we're out here for you and, and that because, you know, he loved hearing from you. And he does answer all the letters that he gets. And he's sacrificed, mm -hmm. uh, sacrificed his life, but he's yeah. still doing so much even mm -hmm. behind bars yeah. for the people. I had uh, received an email, uh, a letter that he had wrote, and uh, I, if you uh, listen to Indian Time, uh, I might read it a couple of times uh, in the future here of what he had, had written to all the people. And, mm. uh, really nice. That's cool. Yeah. So remember Leonard Peltier. Please. And what he sacrificed. Now your radio show, and tell me about both when your show is on and when Jack's show is on so people can tune in again. Okay, my program is the fourth Sunday of every month from 1 to 3 p.m. and that's Native Way. And uh, uh, Indian Time is uh, every Tuesday from 8 to 10 p.m. and that's with host Jack Hyatt and uh, I do the pre PSAs for him with mm -hmm. all the public service announcements and um, every fourth every fourth uh, Tuesday is uh, they have a programmers meeting so Teresa or I fill in for him on that day. Okay well we'll have to tune in. I yeah. always tune in anyhow yeah. but <laughs> we'll make sure our audience tunes well, in and thank, thank you, you for joining us with Native Voice TV. We'll see you again next Sunday and don't forget, send us a little note, a card or something. Give us some feedback. We'll see you at the, um, the American Indian Heritage Celebration on the 18th of October. And yes. we'll have a good time, we'll have right? Have a good time, very good time. We'll and see you next week. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Children's eyes, indigenous souls, indigenous souls. We're alive because we survive. Indigenous ways, indigenous ways are in the hearts of our children.